Yep. I can't seem to get that to come up. All right, and we're live. Live, coming to you live from where are you at, Pat? I'm in beautiful Tampa, Florida today. Beautiful Tampa, Florida, in Bend, Oregon. Sorry for being late, folks. We're working through some multi-screen presentation difficulties, but I think we're getting close. What we're going to do today is we're going to walk through 17 properties that are new. Uh, actually, I think we're down to 15. Two of them came out. We'll get some LOIs on some of the properties from our last event, and we're going to reintroduce a, a couple of properties also from that event. And we're going to walk through them um, and give you an opportunity to get some more information, make offers, and this kind of a thing. May as well do introductions while we're while we're working this out. My name is Breck Palumbo. I'm the president of DistressPro.com. It's parent company, Provest Real Estate, Inc., and also Realty Motor. Um, I am here today serving as a uh, um, sort of a conduit for Pat, and, and what we're doing is we want to present these properties and liquidate them, get them out of here. These are what's called a Section 170 property, which uh, Pat's going to tell us a little bit more about, but say tax exchange where if you've ever heard of uh, you know, I'm sure you've heard the commercials uh, you know donate your car for tax savings this is very similar only it's for big companies and so what these are are surplus corporate properties and Pat we've got your uh, we do have you now up there so we can we can see your screen slides are a little bit small but um, let's see all right uh, now we've got kind of a split screen thing going on there I think we can probably walk work through it like that, if that's all right. And if you can hear us, there we go. Now we're talking. Now we're, what did I say? Now we're cooking with gas. I don't know if they yeah. say that in Tampa. <laughs> I appreciate everybody's patience. Thanks for coming on here. Uh, the reason Pat reached out to me is because he knows that we've got a great network through Distress Pro and. Uh, you know, we had a lot of people on our last call, and we know that if you're a, a subscriber to Distress Pro, then you're out there looking for the real deals. And a lot of those are still going to be with the lenders, but there's other sources for those. Uh, and Pat is really quickly becoming like a, a fantastic source. And Pat, why don't you tell us? Uh, I've told a, a little bit. Oh, you know what I should do? Quick disclaimer. I'm not your attorney, I'm not your real estate agent, I don't represent you, nor do I represent Pat, I'm simply facilitating this. So there's no uh, agency relationship of any kind here. Uh, Pat represents or is the seller depending, and you, you'll go through and tell us about that, Pat. Yeah. And uh, if you don't know Pat Blount, Pat has been in the business, for, I don't know, is it, is, is, it, is it 63 years or 36 years? I think it's 63. <laughs> I get confused, and uh, he's done a lot of note sales, done a lot of distress sales, done a lot of uh, uh, worked with a lot of commercial property, liquidated a lot of commercial property, and notes, and uh, so he's in this new role where his job is to move these Section 170 properties. Pat, can you tell us a little bit more, a little more eloquently, uh, what that's all about? Since yeah, I kind of uh, we, we're. The Wealth Fund Group represents uh, various nonprofit entities and, and the acquisition of, uh, of real estate that is a bargain sale donated under this Section uh, 170 of the Internal Revenue Code. And basically, they get a charitable donation, uh, and the and the charity gets the real estate. The charity is not in the position in a game of repositioning real estate. They strictly want to, to turn these donations into cash, and our job is to find sell uh, buyers to take those uh, properties as the charities receive them. So the charity is typically uh, sometimes these are straight donations, sometimes they're a donation plus cash. Bottom line is these charities are receiving these properties from sellers, not distressed sellers like we used to in note sales. They're receiving it from sellers who are, are receiving a tax benefit for this, um, and the charity subsequently wants to liquidate this property. So, what I'm going to show you today, what I showed you two weeks ago, are properties that are available. I have a strike price on these properties uh, that the minimum number of the charity can take. They're going to be a, a price per pound. So, 
Uh, I'll go through those a as I get them, but I want to talk about a couple of things as before we get started. One, just as Breck did, disclaimer is that you know we're not representing anyone on this particular call. These aren't offers to purchase. They have to be done certainly uh, through confidentiality agreement, through seeing due deals materials, strictly uh, showing what properties are available. Um, but our bidding process, we didn't talk about last time. I want to kind of clear this up. Uh, that you need to register for the event. You, when you do, you sign a confidentiality agreement. In this case, the company says that you're not allowed to call the, 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 the seller, which would be the donor in the charity case. So, um, the, uh, we want you to the request, if you're interested in the property, request the due diligence material, which is going to include a broker price opinion, an internal valuation, maybe CoStar or LoopNet type data. But that's all you're going to see initially. We don't want you to spend a lot of time and money on due diligence if we can't get to the right pricing with you. So we want to make sure, first of all, that you're in the ballpark with us on that. Second, you should, once you've seen the property, that preliminary information, submit a non-binding LOI, a letter of intent on our form. That way it's all consistent so we know your interest level. We understand that you may not be your final price. You haven't seen everything it takes, but at least we're to the point of, Hey, I know where the property is located. I know what it looks like. I know what the specifics are on it. This is what I think I could pay, provided everything checks out. Once you submit an uh, LOI, uh, we would countersign that. The price is acceptable. And then you're going to get a, a draft of a purchase and sale agreement. Uh, once you get the draft of the purchase and sale agreement, you're going to all start sending you the balance of the due diligence materials that you're going to need. We'll send you everything we have about the property. Sometimes it's limited, but we're going to send you what we have. We'll get back a fully executed purchase and sale agreement. You deposit escrow funds. You complete your due diligence, and you close and fund. That's that's the process. Great. Now, great. the higher the price and the shorter the due diligence period, the more likely your bid is going to get accepted. If you want a 60-day due diligence and a 30-day close, you've come to the wrong place. We do not sell properties in that fashion. If you want to buy those properties, go to CBRE. Any real estate company would be glad to sell you on those kind of terms. We're looking for 30-day terms start to finish. So we're not, uh, these are as it, these, these properties are, are well below as is value, uh, many times less than the fire, fire sale value even. Uh, and we expect the buyers to have ready cash and be able to complete a sale 30 days start to finish. So with that said, if you see something you like, if you see if you if you've seen something you like in the past or even now, I ask you to send me uh, those LOIs. If you have our form, send us the LOI at this address. If you don't have the form, send me the property uh, that you're talking about, your bid amount, and your closing terms. I mean. How many days due diligence? How many days to close? We, we'll get you the LOI. So, yeah, that, with that said, Pat, uh, let me cut in there. We we actually we set up a kind of a really easy process for you. You know, last time we had we're, we're we're working through this. This is our second event like this. But what you'll see right now, if you're you're well, presumably you're on the uh, Provest Real Estate site. Uh, right below there, there's going to be a chat window. So if you have any questions while we're going through this or when we get to properties, we want you to go ahead and uh, tune in on the chat and uh, just let us know, you know, let us know what your question is and, and we're going to ask it to Pat here on air. The other thing is before we had a button and whatnot, now, below the chat, you're going to see a form, and it has a list of all the properties that we're going to talk about today. Just check the boxes on those. You go through, you submit your contact information. That'll go to Pat, and in that process, last time what we had to do was that went to Pat. Pat got back to you with the confidentiality agreement. You had to get that back to Pat. We've integrated that all into the one form. So uh, if we come to properties that you're interested in, in getting the due diligence on, go down below the chat and there's a form there. Check the ones that you're interested in and uh, check I agree on the confidentiality agreement after you read it and submit it and that will all go to Pat's team so they can begin the process of, of uh, getting that stuff to you. Sound good, Pat? Thank you. That's right. So our last call we had, we talked about having two props that we were going to offer absolute high bid today, wins, wins the, either one of these properties or both. Uh, the first one, uh, in which I think you've had time to do due diligence or receive the information, is 4518 Blair in St. Louis. It's a 103,000 square foot 
uh, zoned multifamily with a former nursing home. Uh, if you'd like to make offers during this call, either email or chat, however you want to do it, uh, you're certainly welcome to make those offers. Uh, the other property is in Union City, Indiana. Uh, this is a, uh, what the picture you see there is a clear indication of the property. It's both the historic building and the new add-on. This is a 26,000 foot. Those are huge door, drive-through doors. This was a bottling plant. Uh, and I think somebody can make one heck of a buy on this today. So, so these are regardless of price. You you would sell this to me. Day to day. Both of them at, at five o'clock, whatever our high bid is today, we're we're done. So if I gave you a hundred dollars for that today and nobody bid over me, would I take that for a hundred dollars? Yours. That's not a bad deal, Pat. I like that. All right, so uh, we got a question coming in here. It says, are, are there any triple nets uh, among all of these properties? The answer there is no, Pat, right? We've got mostly... Uh, well, we'll go vacant, but there's no triple nets. Right. Okay. So well, let me, let me just... talk about are vacant, and yep. um, so occasionally we do see some with some occupancy in there, but uh, it's usually minimal, and it's usually, uh, you know, I'll, I'll talk about those as, as I go through them. Okay. All right. So then, you know, with that, I think we should go ahead and get started and we'll get through some of these properties. Now, right. if, if we have a bit of a, uh, sometimes we'll have a bit of a delay on these events. So when, the time between, you know, when you ask your question and when we get it may, may take a moment there, but uh, do use the chat, do ask your questions. We're going to try and answer everything we can here today and whatever we can't answer, we can, uh, we'll, if the answer is available, we'll get that answer to you afterwards. So with that, Pat, how about if we uh, get into some of these slides? We can. So your initial list had a couple changes to today. I just got a notice before we started the call on this first property in, in Muncie, Indiana. We do have a, our, we have a tenant that, that occupies the entire building, and they had an option to buy. They just exercised the option, so I do have to take this one from the sale. Okay. I don't any more time with that one today, but you want know, to mark it off of your list. The uh, first property I'm going to come to here is going to be 301 East Broadway in Alton, Illinois. Uh, Alton is on the on the Alton River, uh, located near the Argosy Gaming Casino. This is a 70,000 foot retail office. Uh, there's actually three levels. There's a basement level. There's this ground floor level, and then there's the upper level. Uh, there are some tenants in this. The gross rent right now is about $31,000 a year. Uh, it's when it's been on the market uh, when we get, when we get acquired it at 495. The last sale price recorded on that was in, in 2010 at 675. We've got it approved for sale at 150 thousand dollars, two dollars wow. and 13 cents per square foot. So you're telling me it's 31.5 gross, and this is approved for sale at 150 thousand. That's correct. And Fantastic. that's only about four tenants, I believe. So, you know, it's got a lot, none of the upper floor or the lower floor occupy. A few of the ground floors are. Uh, it's, it's a great location, 30 minutes from St. Louis. I don't know if you're familiar with the casinos on the river, but the Argosy Casino is within walking distance of this property. So uh, I think this is an outstanding deal. Yeah, I would agree. All right, next one I'm going to is going to be Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We have a 20,000-square-foot warehouse. Uh, it's vacant. It's got uh, you, you know heavy heavy electric utilities, 480 volt free phase electric. Has 12 loading dock pushouts on it. Uh, 30 foot clear ceiling heights. It's northwest part uh, northwest of downtown Milwaukee. The building you see next door to it, the the metal brick building you see, is Milwaukee Scrap Buyer, which takes about a whole block. So it was most recently listed at 125. We have it approved at fifty thousand dollars, two dollars and fifty cents a foot. Wow, great! And now, if we have any questions on these as we're going through, I want you to go ahead and pop them into the chat. Anthony's going to uh, relay those to us, and we'll get them answered. So, just as things come up, if you need to know something, go ahead and use the chat and let us know what it is. All right, next property is two 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 zero Northwestern Avenue in Racing, Wisconsin. This is 59,000 foot. Uh, they call it flex space, but basically there's there's three different buildings that you'll see. You see two of them in this building. You'll see the historic building, which is about 20,000 square feet. 
you'll see an office building, uh, which is about 14,000 square feet, and then you'll see a, there's a metal building between the two that uh, connects those. That's another 9,000 feet, so 59,000 feet. Uh, this is about 25 miles uh, south of Milwaukee on Lake Michigan, so about 70 miles north of Chicago. Um, good location, proof for sale at $200,000. When I say price per pound, it really is a price per pound. $3.40 a square foot. Great. So it's a you know, very interesting building uh, or a series of buildings, and it can, and it can be occupied uh, very quickly. The next building we've got is 105 Flester in Rantoul, Illinois. And that's 15 miles south of Urbana. It's north of uh, Champaign. So it's a 73,500 square foot uh, warehouse with 6,000 feet of office space included in that on 7.7 .7 acres. Uh, it had been uh, tenant occupied and, and uh, I think, I believe it's vacant at present. It's got 19 to 21 foot ceiling heights, most recently on the market at a million two. Uh, we approved it for sale at $500,000, $6.80 a foot, and it's ready to occupy as well. You see it's a, it's a decent looking building, uh, and I think it's something that people could get pretty excited about. Our next building is in uh, Gary, Indiana, and if this was an old post office building, this photograph may be probably a better side to this building than this photograph, but that's the photograph that we got on the screen. It's 4,000 square foot. Uh, it's vacant. Uh, it's downtown Gary. Last price listed was uh, 150. It's approved for sale at 50. Uh, certainly, uh, you ought to be able to make it something worth at fifty thousand dollars. This building. Uh, the land. The, matter of fact, the, the land is probably worth that. Great. This next building, I just it just got sold. I, I've had it in the list, but I wanted to see the, you see the types of things that we're seeing and, and how fast they do disappear. This was an industrial facility in Cheyenne, Wyoming, 196,000 square feet on 30 acres. Uh, phenomenal building. Uh, we had it approved for sale at a million three and and pulled the trigger at it. So uh, it did get done before this particular call, but. Um, if you see something you like on these on this call, don't wait uh, two or three weeks and call, think you're going to call and find it. They're going to be gone in a matter of days, typically. Uh, That's the thing when you know when you're putting up offers on, on stuff where we're coming in at frequently like fifty percent or less of uh, assessment or appraised or last BPO and 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 all that. I mean that's kind of the trade. You know where we we went through the due diligence period and and sort of the terms of how these things have to go down and the trade-off is that you're getting a screaming deal, you know, and uh, so it's important to consider that and and uh, and when you go to when you're moving forward, you know, bear bear that in mind. So, all right, the next property is is this is a phenomenal property. It's at 3131 East First Street, Maryville, Missouri. This is an Energizer, Energizer Corporation uh, manufacturing facility, 486,000 square feet with 96 acres. 19,000 feet of it are office. It's vacant. Energizer moved out of it in 2013. Uh, they're still maintaining it. They still own it. Uh, and we uh, are now donating this uh, along with cash to uh, the nonprofit. Uh, and this is a deal that has to close this year. Uh, it was currently listed by Collier's at $5.9 million. We've approved a sale on this at $1.5 million. I, wow. If you have somebody that could be a potential tenant for this building, uh, talk to the people that have been and done the inspection of the building. They say it's magnificent. It's, it's overbuilt in every fashion from, from the air conditioner handling to heat to electric service. Uh, it is a first-class facility. Uh, Maryville is uh, about 40 miles north of St. Joseph, which is north of Kansas City. So, uh, great location. Uh, if this was certainly in a primary, secondary market, we'd be talking about $10 million. 
but a million five, and and it's yours. So tenants for this kind of thing might include like data centers or or other uh, sort of you know folks who who have uh, a large operation like that and they need the kind of overbuilt power uh, and that sort of thing that that's required to get those yeah, things to run. Type of a light manufacturing facility. I mean, it could be any number of things, but I think it housed about 250 employees at one point. Uh, so this is, uh, I mean, there's plenty of information about this out there on the internet. Uh, you'll probably even see the Collier's information that has nothing to do with this particular sale. But uh, this is something that's got a very short fuse. Uh, if you're interested, I mean, call me immediately on this thing. So this has got an upcoming sale. We're going to have another call. I'm not sure exactly what day we talked about having our next call. But yep. I did preview some deals that weren't quite ready. Uh, a lot of these properties that we're getting donated are in escrow. Uh, we're trying to get them closed so we can get them resold. And so when we see new deals come to the market, I'd like to at least you be aware of what's coming. This is a 105,000 foot warehouse in Columbia, Mississippi. Uh, hopefully in the next few weeks we'll see this thing come to the market. But as you can see, it's a really nice looking facility. I've got another upcoming here of a uh, in Brookfield, Mass, 153,000 foot of space on 15 acres, 100% sprinkled. Uh, again, these prices are going to be similar to what you've seen in these other deals. So uh, if, if you're interested in these geographies, please let me know. Next building I've got coming up is going to be in McAllen, Texas, 145,000 square feet. This is the Rio Grande Valley on 16 acres. Uh, great facility, great location high traffic for warehouses and for trucking facilities and uh, to do the NAFTA type cross-border work. The next one is in Lapeer, Michigan, 260,000 square foot on 91 acres. I think you're seeing, what you're seeing as we see these things, the quality is really increasing in the types of products we're seeing. And I think as we work through these older properties at these really low dollar fifty two dollar per square foot uh, you're going to see these prices go up tremendously so I would really encourage you uh, if you see some of these properties you better take advantage of them because the stuff you're seeing is upcoming uh, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be still seen in the past. I think I think we lost, think you, a we lost you a little bit there. Did we lose it? I've got you here, but is that the end of is that the end of your property list? Because we lost your slideshow. That is, uh, I'm sorry. How about you back now? Yep. Okay. Again, let me let's go back through the bidding process. You've already registered. If you're on the call, you already signed a copy. Uh, send a e request for due diligence materials. We're going to send you the initial due diligence materials. At that point. That's all we're going to see. We'd like to see a, some type of, of uh, non-binding LOI at that point from you. Uh, we'll countersign when we agree to a price, and then you can then you can uh, we'll start with the purchase and sale agreement. You'll have the, you'll get the balance of the due diligence materials. You'll have the ample time to do your uh, due diligence. Uh, you'll get your fully executed PSA. We'd like to see the pods at that point. We want you to complete your due diligence, close and fund. Again. Uh, Higher the price, shorter due diligence, more likely your bid's going to be accepted. Uh, these aren't going to be 60-day due diligence, 30-day. These have to be closed in 2015. So you've got uh, 30, what, six days? Yep, 40. Yep, 46 days, something like that. 40 days a day to get them done. So. And I, I think it's uh, important again to point out that the the reason you know these terms are are sort of uh, not very forgiving although it's more more forgiving than the auction business that's for sure because I'm not holding your your uh, your check uh, is that you're you're getting these properties you're getting first crack at these properties at these ridiculously low release prices um, in advance of you know really the market and uh, and the trade-off for that is you need to be able to move quickly and and not have a lot of contingencies Right. That's right. So back one more time. I just wanted to refresh you on St. Louis and on Union City. Uh, I really yeah, let's talk about to let's talk about St. Louis for a minute. So St. Louis is zoned okay. as a multifamily, right? Correct. 
and so it's zoned as a multifamily. It is, we've got 103,500 square feet. Any idea how many doors you got there? I don't know that, no, sir. Okay, and so it's approved for immediate sale at any price. So if I offer you, Pat, if I want to pay $500 for that today, by the end of today, Pat, you'll take it. If somebody has a bid more, yes. Fantastic. want to make sure we're really clear about that. That one and this one both, Union City. Union City. 26,000 square foot retail, former building, uh, former bottling plant, and it's currently vacant. Now, do we know about the occupancy status on the other? Uh, is it, well, on St. Louis? They're both vacant. Both vacant. Okay. Great. And, and this... Um, I understand this building was built in the 40s the, on this on the first part, but the newer part was built back in '94. The where you see the metal building with the garages; those are drive-through garages. So, okay. I mean, it's it's a great looking. It's, I think for for what you can buy it for, you should be able to certainly make a lot of money on the thing. Should we talk you know, about I broker think, uh, cooperation for a moment? Okay. Yeah, we will, we have uh, uh, independent contract agreements. We're happy to sign with with your broker on this call. Uh, we'd be happy to sign when we pay you the uh, fee to do this, and, and uh, we can talk about those. If you'd like to see those, I'd be glad to send you one. Right. So, so if you are a broker and you, and, you, and you know somebody who's interested, you, you, will, you can get compensated on these. You, you've, you know, if you're properly licensed, you've, you'll register your buyer, and you, you'll get compensated on this. That's correct. And last, uh, matter of fact, we had quite a few brokers in the last call that, that, that have Register through us, and uh, we've got some LOIs in place where the broker's going to do quite well on some of these. So um, I'd be happy to discuss those, you know, offline with you exactly what those terms are. But yeah. uh, you know, feel comfortable that you can bring us a buyer that you don't have to worry about how the buyer is how you're going to get paid. Right, and we never poach them, and it's the easiest deal you'll ever do. That's right. That's you think right. you compare this to doing buying a bank REO? Uh, there's no comparison. Uh, you know where the banks are, are slow to move, difficult to work no with, commission. have unex unrealistic price expectations. Uh, we're out to sell these properties. Period. Uh, Pat, I've got a question. Is there a North Carolina North Carolina property? There is a North Carolina property uh, in uh, West End, North Carolina, fifty six thirty four North Carolina Highway two eleven. It's a three hundred fifty like square foot warehouse. I don't have it on the screen. Okay, it looks like we've got through uh, our list that we had for today uh, pretty pretty quick. Do you want to take a moment to go back over any of the assets from last time that we didn't um, that you don't have LOIs on, or or that maybe it's shaky, but they're still available at any rate? What do I, what do I, I, if I don't have that on my screen here, but I can tell you there's there's a number of those properties that have that are now off the market. Um, but I'll, I'll walk through it. Um, Maybe we just go like a, you know, we'll just uh, do a shotgun approach, just blast it out there so so people know it's still hanging around. Okay, Atlanta, Georgia, on our last call, 19 acres, redevelopment opportunity, still available, uh, price at $700,000. Uh, we've had some talk from people about developing a parking lot there. It's a mile north of Atlanta Hartsville Airport. It could be could be an outstanding opportunity. And the last uh, ask or assessment or appraised value on that? The last ask price was one million seven forty-five. We've got it approved to sell at seven hundred thousand. What else you got? This is a mile from the Atlanta airport, so uh, the Bedford property is gone. We still have the Calumet City, Illinois property available, forty-two thousand six hundred square feet, formally listed at two point five million. Uh, approved price eighteen. I mean, eight hundred thousand. That's eighteen dollars a square foot. And this this building is ready to go, ready to occupy. It's in the Chicago area. Uh, Portsmouth, Virginia is gone. It was a seventeen thousand foot office building. Uh, Mountain Union, PA, is still available. Fifty six thousand square feet on three acres for one hundred fifty thousand dollars. The Keokuk, Iowa property, 75,000 square feet on 78 acres, still available at $200,000. Evansville is gone. 
Mountain View, Arkansas is still available, 155,000 square feet at $250,000 is $1.60 a square foot. 48 acres, 155,000 square feet in Mountain View, Arkansas, formerly listed at $1.9 million, on the, approved for sale at $200,000, $250,000. Uh, Fantastic. Orange, Virginia, 35,000 square feet on three acres, $250,000. The Colorado Springs property is sold. The Van Lien PA property is sold. Sterling, New Jersey property is sold. The Rantoul, Illinois, I talked about this last time. I had, I had my wires crossed on this particular deal. There's 25 residential lots, Rantoul, Illinois, that's at south of Chicago. Um, and I, ha I told you it was, I told you wrong. I, I'd, I'd give you the warehouse pricing. This was actually $5,000 per lot. Or 125,000 for 25 residential lots. That's Rantoul. Okay, 125,000 125, for 25 residential 25 lots. lots. Five, that, that comes up to 5,000 per lot. Wow. It's like a land bank deal. Just put it away, save it for later, or get going on it. I still have Avon Park, Florida, 109,000 square feet on 10 acres. That's about 100 miles south of Orlando, formerly listed at $1.1 million. I have it approved at $500,000. That's $4.55 a square foot. Vineland, New Jersey is sold. And Delta, Colorado is sold. And then I've got the two, I've got St. Louis and Union City to sell today. So uh, the stuff, as you can see, is not, it's not going to be here in two weeks. Uh, everything I've showed you today and last and last uh, two weeks ago will not be available come January 1. You know what we didn't cover, Pat, and somebody might be looking at these and they're saying, well, yeah, I'm going to get it for $500, but, uh, but you know, it's dirty. It's got environmental problems. Oh, the, the, uh, these don't have environmental issues. Typically, there's indemnity with environmental uh, if they do have an environmental issue, we would certainly let you know what that issue is up front. You know, we don't want to take properties on. These charities don't take properties on their environmental because they have to get rid of them. Uh, taxes are typically current uh, on these things. If they're not, if there is something other than current, we would let you know at that point as well. So these are going to be clean, clean sales. Great. So do they come with a phase one? Well, there'll be a phase one. We don't typically get an update phase one because we're not. We don't typically own them very long. So, but when you take it in, you have a phase one when your when your client takes it in. Right. We'll send we'll send you a copy of the phase one that we have in in place. And do they have back taxes? Typically, the taxes are going to be current. Uh, again, we don't own these very long. These I mean, these 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 cherries don't own these very long. The tax has to be current when they close them. So typically, there's there's not a tax issue at all. If Great. there is, we would let you know that up front. So you can expect expect on these clean title uh, or good title uh, a phase one that uh, that that indicated is not any problems. Although we can't guarantee, we're, we're not guaranteeing or warranting that information here in this call, um, and that you're taking it without any back taxes. That's correct. Great. Well, if we don't have any other questions coming uh, from the attendees, then I think we should wrap this up and uh, and move on. But I, I think that these are some fantastic deals. I really look forward to um, to what else you've got coming, Pat, and so we can get more. Right, well, you know, I'll click them here again real quick. Uh, Alton, Illinois. Uh, I think it's a great building, great location. Uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, actually, let's go back to Alton, Illinois for just one second. So. So, Alton, Illinois, this is approved for sale at $150,000. It's $2.13 per square foot. It's got, it's partially occupied. It's already got $31,560 coming in on the thing. Seems like a slam dunk to me, Pat. Well, I think it would be, and I, I think the, uh, like I said, you could finish the upstairs out for any number of things, and the basement out the same way. Uh, I... I don't know how you could go wrong with this with this property at this price. Do you have any information that's if somebody that's inquires? That's What's that? Do you have some uh, information there if somebody inquires in terms of like tenant mix? Is it just uh, like mom pop retail in there, or what, what's going yes. on with the tenants? Yeah, yeah. that's that. I think that's all. But it is, not, and I don't I don't have the rent roll in front of me, so I can't speak to that. But I did 
you look at it yesterday, I think there's a little, uh, some type of a C store cafe and and uh, I believe an insurance company, something like that. Great. But uh, uh, look at it, go look at the map. It's, it's it's a great location. I think you'll see the Argosy Gaming's been there for what 20 years out there in that area, done fairly well. Uh, last sale price again was six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars back in twenty ten. So, um, Milwaukee again fifty thousand dollars for lots a lot of buildings for fifty thousand uh, dollars that you could be into uh, quite quite easily. Uh, this massive project there in Racine, Wisconsin, uh, fifty-nine thousand feet at three dollars and forty cents a square foot. Uh, the Rancho, Illinois. This was the one I had confused last time about the lot. Same same location. That's 15 miles south of Urbana. Uh, Five hundred thousand dollars ready to occupy. Six dollars and eighty cents a square foot, with 19 to 21 foot ceiling heights. Gary, Indiana, fifty thousand uh, dollars. Downtown Gary. Uh, Cheyenne, as we mentioned, was gone. Uh, Maryville, Missouri. If you don't look at another deal, look, you need to look closely at this deal. Insane price uh, for 486,000 square feet on with 96 acres. Yeah, I would imagine there's a lot of technical uh, type tenants out there where that'd be a fit. But uh, you can Google that Energizer up, and and uh, and you'll see a number of articles about the plant they had there. Uh, I believe Colliers has information online when they had it listed for sale. Uh, phenomenal facility. This will be one of those deals that you'll see in six months and say, man, I remember I could have bought that for a million five. <laughs> I've got a, a whole portfolio of those, Pat. <laughs> well, I, I invite you to get the information to us. If you have specific questions, you're welcome to send me an email. Um, and if you want to get your bids in on St. Louis and uh, Mount Union get a, or Union City, get a man today. So here's the easy way to do that. There's a form below the chat, below this video. In that form, you can uh, check off any of the properties that you're interested in getting the uh, more information on. You can also uh, initiate your bid process there. And in that form is where we're going to have you sign the confidentiality confidentiality agreement so we're going to take that whole step out of the of the back and forth and uh, it's a real efficient way for us to sort of move through uh, this process get the information to Pat's assistant's hands really fast so she can turn around and, and get you back what you need so I think if we don't have any other questions Pat I think that's it right that's it talk okay. to you hopefully in another week or so Okay, sounds great. Well, next week, let's not do it because we've got Thanksgiving. But what you okay. should do now is if you're interested in any of these properties, uh, go down below the chat, use the form, complete that. That's going to set the whole process in motion. You'll get all the information that you need. You'll have your time to do your due diligence and your, your walkthrough, what have you. Um, and, uh, and we'll move to close by the end of the year. Sound good? Thank you, Breck. All right. Thank you, Pat. Have a great day.